In this video, we'll take a look at the concept of capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor. I have two flat square metal plates, and you can just see a little bit of a drawing here. I'm going to have a bigger drawing uh, in just a, a minute. Uh, but uh, two square metal plates face each other. The top plate, let's say, carries a charge of plus Q, and the bottom plate carries a charge of minus Q. We want to find the formula for capacitance uh, based on the area of one plate and the separation of the two plates. Well, some concepts here. In capacitors, experiments reveal that the potential difference, the voltage, uh, between the plates is proportional to how much charge the capacitor is carrying. Uh, so we could say Q is proportional, that's a proportionality symbol, to V. Q is the charge, V is the potential difference between the plates. Or if we use a constant of proportionality and call that constant C, then we would have Q equals CV. C is the constant of proportionality between the charge and the potential difference. We want to determine a way to calculate C that does not use V or Q. Uh, so that's a start. Uh, the charge is proportional to the potential difference. Then secondly, when we have an electric field that's uniform, a constant electric field, the potential difference between two points, this V is the same as the V up here, can be calculated by the electric field times the distance between the points. Now I'm shortcutting a little bit here. I'm assuming the electric field and this distance, this path, are parallel to each other and in the same direction. So we have uh, uh, potential difference is electric field volts per meter times some number of meters of distance between the two points. And again, it is crucial, I'm shortcutting a little bit here, uh, the electric field and this distance must be parallel for this calculation to be true. Uh, so we can make that one substitution, and we can uh, express Q equals C times E times D. To go further, I'm going to look for a substitution for Q, and we're going to do this in uh, a manner using Gauss's law for electricity. Uh, Gauss's law lets us calculate the electric field based on the charge and the orientation of the electric field to something called a Gaussian surface. So I'm going to move to my uh, more expanded drawing here. So here is the uh, parallel plate capacitor plus Q minus Q. And I've drawn, attempted to draw here a box. This is going to be my Gaussian surface, my Gaussian surface. It's an enclosed surface, and I just happen to have a Post-its Notes uh, little pad here. This is the Gaussian surface that I want to use. It has six sides, so a top, a bottom, and then the four sides on it. But it has six surfaces, and it uh, will be something you mentally, if you would uh, cooperate with me, mentally you'll be placing this in between the two plates of the capacitor. Um, so Gauss's law, and not doing the calculus version of Gauss's law here, but uh, Gauss's law can be expressed that if we would add up, if we would add up, so I'm going to use sigma for sum, we'd add up the electric field with dot product with the area vector around the whole surface, if we do the whole surface, the entire surface, that result will be equal to the charge that's inside the surface. I'm using small q here. Uh, divided by an electric constant, epsilon naught. This is Gauss's law in non-calculus form. Now if we add up the uh, electric field with dot product with the area vector, around the surface, we'll come up with the uh, result Q over epsilon naught. Now, with the uh, post-it pad that I showed you here, with the uh, Gaussian surface I've drawn in here, there are six uh, surfaces 
to investigate. I'm going to start with the uh, case of the top. So I'm just going to expand this out a little bit. Um, e dot A for the case of the top side. And as I've drawn it here, I've embedded the top of the Gaussian surface inside the metal plate. It's inside the metal plate. Now, a little while ago in your physics course, you would have uh, talked about the amount of um, electric field, electric field value inside a conductor in the case of static electricity. Uh, for static electricity, what you would have discovered is the electric field is zero inside a metal plate for static electricity, not talking about electric currents and circuits. But static electricity, the electric field is zero inside a conductor. So that's going to contribute zero. Next, we have four sides to this Gaussian uh, uh, surface. So before, and we're going to do the dot product of the electric field and the area vector. You need to remind yourself something about dot product. Here, the electric field vector is coming straight down, just grazing the side of the uh, surface here my post-its notes. The area vector is defined to go out perpendicular from the uh, area. These two vectors are 90 degrees apart from each other. They're perpendicular. Anytime we have a dot product of two vectors that are perpendicular, the result is zero. So we've done the top. The four sides contribute nothing to the sum because the vectors are perpendicular. The dot product of electric vector and the area vector is zero. Well, we have a bottom to do here. And on the bottom, we have the electric field at the bottom, dot product with the area vector. These two vectors are parallel to each other off of the bottom. I might possibly attempt to uh, put this in here. But I'm going back on the bottom of the object here. The electric vector is coming straight down. The area vector comes straight down from here. They're parallel to each other. And this gives us the full magnitude E times A. Then, how much charge is inside this Gaussian surface? Well, I'm going to let this Gaussian surface expand to fill up the whole metal plate. And I want this Gaussian surface to uh, encompass all of the charge that's on the bottom here. This plus charge uh, and minus charge plates. The uh, minus charge here is actually going to repel the electrons in this top plate. And we end up with all the positive charge right on the surface of this uh, uh, metal conductor. And that being the case, we have the electric field running from top to bottom. The amount of charge inside this expanded Gaussian surface, where it's expanded to go you know, all the way, now drawing a, a Gaussian surface that's here, over to here, back. Again, the top portion is in the uh, metal plate, and so forth and so on. But what's the amount of <coughs> excuse me charge that's inside this big Gaussian surface, it's Q. And then we have epsilon naught. So what Gauss's law tells me here that in between this parallel plate capacitor, the value of the electric field um, is related to the charge. And Ea, and I'm going to go ahead and, you know, that's equal to there. I'm going to go ahead and drop down. I'm going to solve this for Q. Well, obviously, I just have to multiply by epsilon naught on both sides. So I get epsilon naught E A equals Q. And now I'm going to come back to my other sheet and use this result that the relationship between the charge on the parallel plate capacitor and the uh, electric field depends on the area of the plate and this electric constant epsilon naught. And by the way, in this parallel plate capacitor, the magnitudes of the Qs are identical. If we have uh, 
plus three microcoulombs on the top plate. We have minus three microcoulombs on the bottom plate. Okay, coming back into here. So we've used Gauss's law and we've come up with this connection between um, Q. Now using Gauss's law, we come up with this, epsilon naught, E, and A. And now it's time to substitute use this expression for Q in what we uh, temporarily had. So I make that substitution, I get epsilon naught E A equals, I just substituted here, epsilon naught E electric field in the area of the plate, equals the capacitance times electric field and distance between the plates. You can see that the electric field value cancels and the capacitance if I divide by D, epsilon naught, the area of the plate, divide by the distance by the, between the two plates, that's our formula for calculating the capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor. Does not depend on Q, does not depend on the potential difference between the two plates. This is a geometric calculation. In this example, I'm using a vacuum, nothing between the two plates. Uh, don't have time in this video to talk about dielectric, um, but just a vacuum between the two plates, and we get the expression for the capacitance epsilon naught times the full area of one plate divided by the distance between the two plates. So, hope you uh, followed most of that. If you did not follow something, you should watch it again or ask your instructor.